Thank you so much, uh, my dear Erda Bank, for um, the powerful prayer. We thank God for your life. Um, good evening, Church. Uh, as I said, uh, unfortunately, we will not be uh, able to teach us tonight, but he uh, has already told me in advance. Um, we want to thank um, Pastor Mana and the Man, for the knowledge they shared with us going through First Peter from chapter 1 to chapter 5. And the chapter 5, as um, you could see on the portal, was so it, it's um, a chapter that touches everybody's life, uh, especially in, in, uh, in the structural set up of the Church of Christ. And um, and shortly after Apostle Peter wrote the uh, the first um, epistle, he, he, he wrote the second Peter too. And we started wondering why was the urgency so, I, I mean, so immediate because um, he was virtually writing to the same audience. But as we now, you know, go out, uh, go in depth into the into the author's uh, intention of uh, immediately writing the, the the second episode. We will really understand why it was so urgent, and uh, uh, curiously enough, is also what is happening in our own world today. So tonight, uh, I'm going to go uh, through the introduction to Second Peter. But in order for us to be able to understand the <clears throat> the introduction, I, I will, you know, like to read the first uh, chapter of uh, Second Peter. I'm going to read from New Living Translation, which is going to give us an a, an insight into into what is happening or what was happening in in, in the early churches, especially uh, before uh, Apostle Peter. Um, you know, was crucified. He said <clears throat> in the in the first chapter of uh, Second Peter, he said this letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you, who share the same precious faith we have. And this faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Then he went on in, in chapter, in, in verse 3, growing in faith. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence and because of his glory and excellence he has given us great and precious promises these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the worst corruption caused by human desires 
In view of this, every effort to respond to God's promises Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paying attention to scriptures. Verse 12. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon live this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I am gone. For we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when he received honor and glory from God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly beloved Son, who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that. We heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on that holy mountain. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, no prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit. And they spoke from God. So he said, no, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit, not from their own understanding. And they spoke from God. So now, this is very powerful. Powerful indeed. Who wrote the book? Obviously we know that Peter introduced himself as, at the beginning of this letter as a bond servant an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he addressed the letter to those who have received faith, a faith of the same kind as ours. As he wrote in first in Second Peter 1 1. Only later does it become apparent that Peter was writing to the same group of believers who had received his first letter. The author reflected that this is the second letter. I am writing to you, as we understand it from 2 Peter 3, 1. Where are we? When did Peter write this letter? Peter wrote this letter from Rome. Soon after he wrote 1 Peter in AD 64 to 66, that is AD means 64 years after the death or after the resurrection of Jesus Christ between 66 64 and 66 years after Jesus Christ departed his, his ascension. So, what will have prompted another letter to the same group so soon after the first? From the context of this letter, it appears that Peter had received reports of false teachers in and among the churches in Asia Minor. False teachers. Who are false teachers? 
The apostle warned them about the insidious presence of those who spread heresies among the people. Marking such difficulties as a sign of the last days, if you remember. Even the master, they warned of every one of us that at the, the advent of the, the end times, that the last days, he said, false messiahs will rise, false prophets will come, claiming to be me. And a lot of people will rush to them and say, but be careful. Be careful. There be a lot. They, they again describe them as ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. And they will deceive people by their sweet tongues. They will deceive people by, 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 by gospel of prosperity. He said, you have to be very careful with them. And these are the people we are facing today, in the Christendom today, in, the, in our own world today. We have more population of false prophets, more than the, 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 the genuine prophets, I mean, more than the genuine, uh, 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 shall we say, pastors, reverend, or men of God, or servants of God. So the apostle warned them about the insidious presence of those who spread heresies among the people, marking such difficulties as a sign of the last days. Peter wanted to encourage his people to stand firm and to instruct them on how best to do that. And if you remember again, during the last uh, uh, last Wednesday, our general Basia Pesamana re-emphasized again the need for us at this time, not to joke, not to play with our armor of God. This is the time. This, this we are facing. We are, we are facing those challenges now. The end times are already with us. We must be guided by the armor of God, so that we will not allow anything, the, the arrows of the enemy, to penetrate, to, to come near us. The breastplate of the uh, of salvation. We must be with us. We must protect ourselves. So why is that second Peter so important? You see, the church is in Asia Minor. We are not just struggling with the persecution and suffering addressed in Peter's first letter because in the, in the first letter that Peter wrote, he laid emphasis on persecution. He laid emphasis on how you can endure persecution. He laid emphasis on how glorious it is to endure suffering for Christ. That the benefit you get, that 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 the that the, the reward you get is greater than the, 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 the punishment or the persecution. And we dealt at length with that one. So they also had strife and dissension within their ranks. So what we are now saying is that Peter is not writing this second letter because of persecution, but because we within the rank and file there were strives, misunderstanding. There was not love, rivalry. And that was what the uh, elder or bank uh, prayed about this evening. Let there be love, let there be understanding heart. If there is strife in the church, we are in problem. If there is strife in the church, there is, there can be, we can never receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit came to them when they were in one accord praying together. In one accord. So that is what is happening today now. And that is what Peter was writing to, that there was strife and dissension within the Arabs in an effort to stem the type of heresy and false teaching among the Christians. Peter emphasized the importance of learning and clinging to the proper knowledge of God. Peter emphasized the importance of learning and clinging to the proper knowledge of God knowledge of God. And this brings us again to this question. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Who can enlighten us? What kind of knowledge? Are we saying that we don't need to have any education or anything but only the Bible, the knowledge of the Bible is, is, is survives for us? Or what is the knowledge of God? How can we get knowledge of 
Because some people said, but the apostles did not go to any university. Because they were fishermen. But after three years, their life was completely changed. Their life was transformed. And the Pharisees described that we are university graduates. They marvel. They said, how could these people speak like this? Obviously, they must have been with Jesus. So now, how can anybody explain to us what Peter meant by saying Peter emphasized the importance of learning? and clinging to the proper knowledge of God. How do we understand it? Can somebody enlighten us? Anyone? Or what does it mean by my people perish for no love, for lack of knowledge? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So, it's not just about uh, university education or any hierarchical, tertiary or whatever kind of education. Yeah. Um, people perish because of lack, due to lack of knowledge. Because even in the Bible, our God made promises to us, things that He has already laid out, roadmaps on how you can accomplish your goals, how you can obtain victory, how you can protect yourself from the enemy, yes, how you could, you, you could be successful in business. So so many things that you already laid out in the text. That's right. Yes. And, and we can read the text and learn about how um, the, the, um, the, um, the, 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 the apostles or the disciples how they were able to spread gospel, or how they were able to 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 um, um, to to, to uh, free themselves from bondage. Sorry. You know, there are verses that teach us how to pray, verses that teach us how to do so many things. But if you don't immerse yourself in the world, if you don't learn, if you don't try to find out what are the, the secrets of success. Or other things in your life, then you suffer unnecessarily That's right. because you lack the knowledge, you lack that ability to do that uh, uh, search. We know people who are not educated, mm -hmm. but who can quote the Bible, who can go and you know, research the Bible That's right. in Africa and or other parts of the world. That's right. So it, it, it's of no excuse for anyone, but you know, when people decide not to seek knowledge. And again, knowledge is not just the biblical knowledge, mm -hmm. but knowledge in many other areas of your life. That's right. And people are perishing today because of that. That's what I have. Is that why they say knowledge is power? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are saying. In, in fact, this concept was so important to him that the word knowledge appears in one form or another so 15 times in the span of this short three chapter letter, 15 times that Apostle Peter laid emphasis on knowledge, on knowledge, on knowledge, that you must have knowledge. You cannot be complacent. You cannot be satisfied with what you know. You will continue to learn till you die. That is what Apostle Peter is saying here. So Peter's theme in, in, in this second letter is a simple one. The theme is pursue spiritual maturity through the word of God as a remedy for false teaching and a right response to heretics in light of Christ's promised second coming. So the theme that our teachers be teaching us is pursue spiritual maturity through the word of God as a remedy for false teaching and a right response to heretics in light of Christ's promised second coming. Like Edda Kagwa has explained to us, if you are not grounded in the word, it will be possible for any fake or any false pastor to come 
and quote the Bible to support his, his, his erroneous job. He, he said, I want to feed my sheep. I want to feed my sheep does not translate literally to asking the congregation to go into the field and start eating grass. That is heretic teaching. But if you are grounded in the word of God, like Pastor Mana said last week, after 40 days of fast of Jesus in the wilderness, the, the, the Satan knew that he was hungry. And because Jesus Christ was also 100% human flesh, like all of us fasting today. Yes, sir. Hello. I'm listening to you. Oh. No. I'm still on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So when false teachers begin to whisper their sweet words into the ears of immature Christians, the body of Christ begins to break apart, to lose what makes it distinctive. Yeah. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Thank you. by free conference call hd.com can you hear me now please announce yourself can you hear me now yes yeah, ah, i can't believe it satan is a liar <laughs> i can't believe it <laughs> so so what we are now talking about about false prophets it's um <clears throat> like uh, pastor Mena said the last week about um um Satan. Now, Satan even understands the Bible more than any one of us. Because if you remember, he, he, he was uh, one of the, 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 the most important angels standing before God. And he knew the word of God. He knew that Jesus Christ was 100% human flesh when he came to earth. And he knew that he was hungry in the wilderness. So he quoted the Bible. That if you are the son of God, command these stones to turn to bread. Ah, but Jesus Christ replied him also with the, with the quotation from the Bible. Now that man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the word of man, God. He took him again, again to, to the mountain high. He showed him all the glories of, of Jerusalem. All the riches of the, of, of Jerusalem, and this is the and this is the, exactly what is happening in our world today. Satan will take all our false prophets to show them all the all the wealth of this nation, the jets and everything. And he told Jesus, "All these things have been given to me by God. All you have to do just bow down and worship me." 
Now I give it to you. What did the master say? He said, that, say you must not tempt the Lord thy God. That must, that was, I mean, you know that you must not serve any other God, that only God. And then he took Jesus again to the high, to, 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 to the high peak of the, of the temple, like, like a 13-story building. And he quoted Psalm, uh, Psalm 91. That if you, he said, he said, jump. He said, for he will command his angels to guide you that you will not lose your, that you will not dash your feet against the stone. He quoted, Jesus Christ quoted the Bible. So that's what uh, 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 Dr. Osman is saying, you have to be grounded in the world. Because you don't know when you are going to be tempted. The stone is not going to come to you with horn in, on his head. It's not going to come to you uh, 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 like a dragon with fire in his mouth. It can come in any form, beautiful form. It can come in the form of a lady. It can come in the form of a sweet pastor. It can come in the form of anything. And, and, and believe me, if you are not very careful, you'll be swept off your feet. But you have to be grounded in the world to be able to recognize when and how do we recognize false prophets. Because, because the number 666 is not written on the forehead of anybody. The son of the beast is not written on, on the forehead of anybody. But how do we recognize the false prophets? So those are what the, the uh, whoever is going to teach us next week. When they start going into the into the details of uh, the first chapter, they will be telling us. They will be telling us. So that is what Apostle, uh, I mean, P Peter was writing here because it was too urgent for him. When false teachers begin to whisper their sweet words into the ears of immature Christians, the body of Christ begins to break apart, to lose what makes it distinctive in the first place. Faith in the unique person, faith in the unique person and work of Jesus Christ. So we need faith. Peter repeatedly points to the word of God as the primary means of growth. For the Christians, as he pointed out in, 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 in um, chapter 1, verse 4, verse 4, he, he said that, uh, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. His promises. And those promises means faith. Because if you don't have faith, you will not believe in them. So that is what he's saying. And then also in, in the same uh, in, uh, chapter chapter 1, verses 19, 19 to 21, it, it says that it, 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 it said, because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawn, and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding. No. Or from human initiative. No. Those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. But what do we have today? What do we have today? We thank God we don't have them anymore in Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Anytime we are having revival or we are praying, so all of a sudden you see somebody just prophesizing, prophesizing, and, and then telling lies again the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells me. And da, 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 da. And, and unless you are moved, and you cannot be moved all the time. So that is what Apostle Peter is saying here. He's warning us. Peter encouraged his reader to apply themselves to acquiring the true knowledge of God and living out the life of faith with all diligence so that they may be found by Jesus in peace, spotless and blameless. And if believers did not follow his advice, they will be giving their Christian community over to the heretics. People who look to exploit with false words. How do we apply this in our life today? 
as with the recipients of Peter's letter, the, the, the Jews that he wrote to, we all go through difficult times. Those trials seem to, lead, to hit us even harder when the source of the struggle comes from somewhere or someone close to us. We all have those problems. We know intuitively this is true in our own personal life. We have problems in our marriage. We have problems in our unexpected pregnancy of our daughter. We have problems in abusive relationship with a relative, but it was true within the church as well. And, and the church is not even spared as well. And that is where we have the, 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 the counseling uh, department in the church to sort all these human problems. Believers can create dissension at any time in multiple ways. Particularly in the areas of relationship and theology. <coughs> If the church is not very careful, if the church is not grounded in the word of God, it will be, it will be difficult. And this is what we are praying about. We are moving to a cathedral. And when we get to cathedral, we will not be managing 25 people anymore. We will not be managing 50 people anymore. We will be, we'll be, we'll be thinking about 150, 200, 300 people. And I bet you, you cannot think that 200 people you, 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 you're going to be able to control them. We shall have hot heads. We shall have cold heads. We shall have lizards. We shall have crabs. We shall have different types of people. How do you deal with them? And who are the leaders to deal with them? We, you are the leaders now. We are the leaders now. We are not expecting leaders to, to come tomorrow from some nowhere. And this is why it is very, very essential that the leaders that Pastor Mana has now have to rethink their responsibility, have to rethink their position, how to rethink the challenges that they will face, how to rethink their expectation from them when we get to the cathedral. Because, like he said, people will be, will be allocated to different, different ministries which he has already started to do. But how are we aware? How, how much are we aware of the responsibility given to us? So, 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 so this is what Apostle Peter is writing here. You see? So believers can create dissension in multiple ways, particularly in the areas of relationship and theology. To guard against that kind of discord, both in our families and in our churches, God's people need to know who he is. Our knowledge of God through his word is the first line of defense against the conflicts that threaten to tear us apart. As Peter wrote, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, 17-18 so with that in mind, what means are you taking to grow in your faith? How can we guide our minds with the proper knowledge of God so that we may not drift off from the path that God has laid out for us? Because if I ask, how can we grow in faith? I will get an obvious answer that Faith comes through hearing. And hearing what the word of God. So this is what we are talking about tonight. You see, we, we, we have credible reason to believe that Apostle Peter was, was, was really desperate when he wrote this letter to the Jews. But what he wrote about in those days is now happening in our own life today too. You see, Peter wrote this, uh, this uh, uh, second uh, uh, epistle due to infiltration of false teachers into the church, bringing destructive teaching contrary to the gospel of repentance and faith brought by Jesus Christ. As, as uh, Mark remarked it in, in Mark 1.15. And so Peter wrote to them that false prophets also arose among the people, 
just as there will be false teachers among you <clears throat> who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves sweet destruction. The question I'm going to ask tonight is not particularly uh, um, particular to our own church, but the, our overseas mission. Our general overseer and uh, Rao Beng and, and um, Egrikines Mari, all of them, they joined the other pastors in Africa to go to, to Ghana to plant, to plant churches, to plant the churches. How are we monitoring them? How can we help them? How can we make sure that we don't have heretic preaching among the pastors? Can anybody help us? Elder Obeng? Have you reached out to Coco, the pastors there? How can we guide them? How can we? Because we are, we, we, we are blessed in the United States of America here. We are having Bible study class. But what we are teaching is not reaching them over there. So how, how, because you are the evangelist, Pastor Mana is the evangelist and Pastor and the Ra Obeng. So how are you reaching out to these people? How can we help these pastors to make sure that what we are feeding our own people here, we are also feeding them over there? Any suggestion? This is a general idea. How can we help? The question I'm asking is that <clears throat> last year, Pastor Mana, Elder Obeng, and Timari, Dickens Mary, they joined other pastors to go to Africa to plant churches. So we planted churches in Koko, we plant churches in Techima, and Techima has almost about six branches now. But we in America, we are holding Bible study class, and we are grounding our people with the Word of God. We are teaching them. But we know that false heresy, false, prop, false, false teachings are on the rampage in Africa today. So all the churches that Pastor Mana planted, how are we going to help them to make sure that what we are feeding our own people here, we are feeding them that they don't deviate from the path of righteousness and they don't preach gospel of prosperity or they don't preach gospel of peace when there is no peace. And also that applies that applies also to Liberia because I forget that we have already opened a, a branch in like I mean two branches in Liberia too. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I come in? Yes, sir. If the shepherd doesn't know what to do, then what's going to happen 
the tree ought not want to be fallen by the wayside, because it will be the blind, it's leading the blind. And, and when I when when I started connecting the Liberia ministry, that's something I just started, which is the what I have a a, a, a a forum for all the leaders. So every 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 time we meet and we discuss at the progress what's going on, and then we teach that the manner is also part of that forum. So Pastor Mana is giving the time to talk to them. What did it mean? Like last, the last meeting was very encouraging. Where Pastor Mana was explaining the Genesis, the new Mangani, the birth of Mangani. So for me, I think the sharing is that if you go out to plant the churches, you must be able to leave a shepherd, and that shepherd must be taught what the vision is and how to 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 to, to teach the word to the people because you are talking about people being grounded in the word. So if the leader is grounded, you will make the follower to be grounded in the word. So there is a need that we have. And and I think Pastor Manus shared that idea yesterday. Yes, Forum where all the leaders are meeting to, 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 to we have study, we have a conversation, we discuss the work, we discuss what the expectation of the ministry is. So for me, that must that must be about that. The leaders must be taught, they must be taught to the letter, they must understand the work, and then they will pass it on to the sheep. God bless you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Because um, uh, Peter wrote this second Peter due to infiltration of false teachers into the church, bringing destructive teachings contrary to the gospel of repentance and faith brought by Jesus Christ. And so Peter wrote to them that false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves sweet destruction. And tragically, many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. We can thank God that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from the trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Peter wanted the church to know that God knows how to deliver them all safely into his kingdom. Now, how do we recognize false teachers? How do we recognize false prophets? Some people may say by their words or by their deeds, we will know them. But in Africa today, it is more like, like a cause for a pastor to be poor. So every pastor wants to get rich. And when it comes to money, it's a different story altogether because the Bible warns us that the love of money is the, is, is the root of all evil, the love of money. And that is what is happening today in Africa. And, and, and once that is imbibed into the, into the teaching or into the lifestyle of a pastor, he, he has already missed the road. So how do we now help them? You see, Peter was very concerned with all of the false teachers moving into teaching position in the church. <clears throat> Some were exploiting them with false words, as, as uh, he wrote in 2 Peter 2.3. And they promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. We saw it every day. We, 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 we have posted it. Pastors riding in jets, pastors riding in Mercedes, pastors riding in limousine, in this or that. Custom-built limousine. 
Jesus Christ did not even ride on camel. He walked on his feet. Apostle Paul walked on his feet. Even though there were no cars in those days. But he lived a humble life. But if you have, if you have not been seen with, a, with, with a, a designer dress, same shoes, same color and everything, you are not, you are not yet a charismatic pastor. So how do we know them? How to recognize them? So it would have been better for them to never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it, they turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. So there is hypocrisy in their teaching. They say one thing, but then do the very thing they teach others to abstain from, and tragically they become entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. So, which is all the more reason why Peter wanted the church to remember that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit does not speak through you, you cannot prophesy. You cannot guess, you cannot say the Holy Spirit is telling me, the Holy Spirit is, is talking through me, no. So we have to be very, very careful. So second, I mean, Peter's point is for the Christians to believe that the scripture and not someone's own interpretation can help us. Is the one that, that can speak through us, not your own interpretation. And we have to be very, very careful. So Peter called us to holy living. You see, Peter reminded us, he reminded the church that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desire. They will mock us. They will laugh, they will laugh at, at us. But they will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continue as they were from the beginning of creation. God is so patient. God, uh, God gives us a long robe. It's not like the God of the olden days that 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 uh, inflict judgment immediately. So 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 that if a sinner is, is enjoying life today now. A lot of anti-Christians have been saying that, however, the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but it is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Because that's what Apostle Paul said, that God would not, he said, he said, he said, oh, he said, he said, he said, he said God is not interested in the, in the death of sinners, but that sinners should come to repentance. So, so it doesn't mean that God is slow. Hmm. But He's giving us enough patience to repent, to repent, to repent. So, 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 so that God wants everybody, everyone to be saved. But tragically, not everyone will humble themselves and repent before God. And trust in Jesus Christ. Just thinking about this should make us ask ourselves, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. How do we wait for the second coming of Jesus? He said to be diligent, to be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace and at peace. That is what Apostle Paul is saying. I mean, Apostle Peter is saying here. So Apostle Peter is more concerned about the false teachers than just about anything else in Second Peter. And so it tells the church, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. And one way to prevent that from happening is to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. 
So the main things about salvation are also the plain things like if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. As we read in Romans 10, 9. So Jesus gives all of us only one or two choices. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life or whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God will remain upon him. So, this is the introduction to what we are going to start next Wednesday by the grace of God. By the grace of God. We're going to talk a lot about faith. What, 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 kind of, what, what does faith do for us? Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask a question. Yes, sir. Um, Yeah. And um, the um, generally the prophetic ministry. My question, um, so, and anyone can ask this, you know, so what's the importance of the prophetic ministry in the church? The importance, so, the, the importance of prophecy in the church? Let, let us give somebody else opportunity to answer that question. What is the important? Because Apostle Peter, I mean, Apostle Paul said that there are so many diversity of gifts. He said, tongues, speaking in tongues, understanding tongues, and then prophecy. Now, so, 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 so it is to edify God. It is to edify the church. The combination of all these gifts are to edify the church. Because it is, it is like, it's like asking what is, the, what is the importance of the tomb. The tomb alone cannot function. So prophecy alone, the church cannot function. And then, then the small finger to has his own job. So prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpretation of the tongues, uh, and uh, so, so many gifts that he listed, they, in the combination of them are to edify to make the church go uh, to smoothly. So prophecy in the church is more like when, when uh, um, in, in, in the olden days, God sent, God will not come down from heaven to warn us. God will not come down from heaven to, 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 um, to encourage us or, to, or to, to exhort us. He will send his people, like God sent, sent Nathan to, to David. God sent Elijah to Ahab, and God sent God sent uh, 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 Elijah also to the to the widow of uh, 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 what do you call it? Zaraphim. So 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 so, so that the 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 the, the that's importance of a prophecy in the church, but. Apostle Peter is saying, I mean, Apostle Peter is saying that prophecy is not true man's initiative or true man's thinking or true man's knowledge or true man's guesswork, but it is through the Holy Spirit. But a lot of false prophets are abound all everywhere today. They, as soon as you finish praying, they start prophesying for you. And they are using they are using the knowledge that they know about you before. It's more like a psychology. So we have we have psychology pastors today. They they are not prophets. So that is what Apostle Peter is saying that we have to very very careful to be able to discern the, 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 the true prophecy from false prophecy. Can anybody help us, help us again to contribute to that one, Pastor Mana? Uh, and also to admonish people, okay? And um, sometimes, so the top job for the prophet is just to 
Thank you. Thank you. 
those things happen, they don't last. That's true. And people suffer, they take it, people's soul to hell. Let's be very careful. The, that particular ministry is very good for the church. It edifies the church. But the ministry is a different call. That's right. Thank you so much. Mm. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's really speaking to you. That's right. Or you get me that of the year. I think something you're thinking about something you just say is the prophecy. Let's be very careful. Mm. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm Thank you. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know it's nine o'clock, but just just I am thirty-five for seven. Yeah. So, which which means the only way to progress is not to relent in our effort at any at any time, just to continue to bring the word to the people. And and that was what brought me back to my first question about how could we help people in in in, in our overseas mission like Coco, like Tejima. We we have not reached out to these pastors in Coco for a long time. And and, and now we have and we ordained so many pastors in Tejima who are supposed to be or presumed to be under Manzanian Fellowship Church. What can we do? How can we help them? How can we reach out to them? Because Apostle 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 Peter wrote to to the to the pastors in Asia Minor from Rome. He wrote to them. He make sure that they, 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 they will read it. But what can we emulate? He's an example to, to reach out to these people. How can we reach out to them? We, we reach out to them. Okay. We reach out to them. Okay. Okay. That's beautiful. Yes, we do. In fact, you know, I, I, that's what I'm in Accra. I can tell you. That's what I'm doing in Accra. Um, I can tell you. Because what we're doing, you know, the end of the We're also, you know, putting the company to communicate to the pastor in Liberia in Accra. That's true. Actually, looking at 
Let's try. Thank you so much. 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 Can you please close us in closing prayer, sir? Share the grace together. Grace the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the love of and God. Love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest in and, and above it also. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. How we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you so much.